Hey, how's it going everyone? Justin again, as always, thanks for watching my channel. Welcome back. Cheers to those of you that have your beers. I hope you're enjoying your work week so far. Today something happened which drew, drove a topic that I wanted to talk about, which was uh, the different types of stressors that you're going to encounter in your life and some coping mechanisms that you can use to your disposal to actually help with the process. And I'm even going to share with you some of the things that stress me out uh, as a person such as yourself. So let's talk about it. If this video is not something you're interested in, feel free to click off. It's not a big deal. If you like the video at the end, please hit the thumbs up. If you didn't like it, hit the thumbs down. Share if you want to share, but put down in the comments section some of the things that you experience stress-wise that stress you out. And then when you think about that, tell us some of the things that you do to help cope with those types of stressors that you run into. Because I know that there's a handful of questions that I've been asked from numerous people that are undergoing some really stressful events right now, and I think they could use some of your words of advice, not just my own. All right, so with that being said, let's dive right into it. There's three different things that you could possibly run into stress-wise, and then of course there's a fourth that nobody really thinks about or knows about. <clears throat> One of them is gonna be physical, physical stress, whether it's exertion from work, or just doing an activity for a prolonged period of time, you'll get physical stress to where you just feel plumb worn out, which makes you either A, wanna sleep more, or B, you just slow down. I mean, way down. The other one's gonna be like an emotional stress, whether it's uh, financial obligations, death in the family, uh, it, it could be just the way that you feel on that particular day. Maybe you're sick or you're under the weather, so it changes your emotional persona and how you feel going into the workday. Maybe you got the case of the Monday blues or the winter blues. The winter time, for some reason, for me, just for whatever reason, it just feels like my most down portion time of the entire year. The rest of the year, I'm usually pretty good. But winter time, I get the winter blues, absolutely kills my emotional spirit, and it just makes me come down a little bit and it's hard for me to try to like bring myself and pick myself back up to a positive state of being. The third thing which I briefly mentioned in this last one which was spiritual. So uh, where are you at with your inner peace, with your religion? Uh, do you have a religion? Do you even follow religion? Maybe not. Maybe you're more of a, a nature kind of a person but there's always this inner peace that you're looking for spiritually and if your spirit isn't connected with the rest of your mind, body, and emotional feeling at the time. Uh, maybe it's just taking a hike through the woods or getting some peace and quiet. Uh, if you don't have that inner peace and that, that, that stress reliever from just doing something that's spiritually relieving, that could be something that actually also triggers uh, some aggression and stress as well. And then the trinity factor. When all three are no bueno, I'm talking like you're physically exerted from work, you're emotionally stressed out from your obligations at home, and you have not had any kind of spiritual release whatsoever as far as maybe it's going out with the family and hanging out with the family, and that's your spiritual release. You're just with them, being a part of them, listening to your kids laugh, exploring new things together, and just relaxing. Maybe you don't have that because you're tight on, on money and you need to like make sure you stay at home and try to like save, and so that triggers a certain stress point, and then you've got your physical and emotional exertions from work and, and then unchartered events that you don't plan for that randomly hit like the loss of a job or the loss of a loved one or maybe unexpected expenditures that you had to come up with that you didn't calculate and save for such as like a vehicle repair, a household repair. I can, I can go into lots of different ins and outs, maybe even registration and, and insurance and that kind of stuff. Last month was a big stressor for me. I had to come up with the registration for my motorcycle, the registration for my Mariner, the insurance for both. I had to come up with the uh, mortgage payment, had to help out with some bills that went towards the house, food for the kids. Then all at the same time, I also made my uh, trip out to Tennessee, which I was able to afford to do to, uh, I was able to afford to do with the help of some good people and with kicking ass and doing extra things on my end like cutting out vices, like knocking off the cigarettes. I haven't had a cigarette in, well, Thursday will be four weeks, so in an, almost an entire month now. This Thursday will be an entire month without any cigarettes. I haven't had any fast food in about five weeks. Uh, I think there was two times that I had fast food in a five-week period. Uh, and then cutting down on my beer intake. I'm not buying you know, 12 to 18 packs every single day anymore. Now I might buy a uh, 12 or 15 pack uh, every two to three days. So, and it's a cheaper pack. So 
this Natty Ice stuff. Probably some of the cheapest beer that I've ever been able to find at $7.99 for a 15 pack. That's pretty cheap shit. And eventually, I'll probably end up stopping the drinking part too, and then I'll just, it'll just be all me and doing whatever. But everybody needs a vice. My vice is beer. Beer is one of those things that relaxes me, it calms me down from a hard day when my back feels all stressed out and I feel the tension in my nerves and everything else. Nothing calms me down and brings me back to a state of nirvana than like having a nice, cold, refreshing beer at my disposal here at the house. I don't drink out in public, uh, I don't drink and drive, I don't go out to bars, I don't go out to clubs, I come home into my own residence and I just sit and chill. Something else that I use as a coping mechanism, if you guys haven't been able to tell, is just shooting the shit with you guys on YouTube, whether it's in a video or a live stream. It relaxes me. I'm able to hang out, cut loose, while out, have a good time here, all within the comfort of my own home. Some other things that I do to try to preemptively prepare myself for these random changes and events that happen is like working more, reducing my expenditures, trying to put money aside, maybe I invest a little bit, uh, whatever the case may be, those are the things that I do. Other things that help relieve stress for me is going out with my family. And then also window shopping. I mean, dude, I'm a tool whore through and through. I tell myself I don't need it and I don't need it and I don't always buy. There are some times that I buy and sometimes it's a need and sometimes it's more of a want than a need. We all have to have at least one vice that uh, keeps us sustainable. You know, at that you worked hard for something, you wish that you had a little something to show for it, and my advice happens to be tools and beer. Everyone has to have a vice. The, the idea of reducing your vices is what's going to help you to be able to put more money aside for those worst case scenarios. I'll bring up a couple of other worst case scenarios that you cannot preemptively plan for. There's no way to plan it. Okay, One is the loss of a job. You had a good job, you had a good thing going whether you had to quit or you got fired, no one can ever predict what happens when that time comes. Maybe the, uh, the employer that you're working for, for instance, when I left Sears, I left Sears Auto Center, moved to Southern California, and then less than a year later, they actually closed the entire auto shop. I already preemptively left to move on to bigger and better things, but had I stayed there, I would have been without a job. That kind of stuff happens. The only way that you can prepare yourself for that is when it happens is what are you going to do about it since it happened? Do you go back to what it was that you were previously doing? Do you start looking for work in a different field? I can't tell you how many times I doubted myself whether I had got let go or I quit or I didn't know if I was actually wanting to do this as a living. Uh, being an automotive mechanic, there was plenty of stressors and plenty of things that really made me question what it was that I was doing and how I wanted to do it and what kind of life I wanted to live and how many hours I really wanted to work for the type of income that I wanted. But at the end of the day, it's feast or famine. You either have a job or you don't have a job. And in many cases, I was overqualified. I had many jobs that I applied for that they said I was too overqualified in a specific area that paid too well to the point where if they felt if they hired me and I got an opportunity, I would leave and they would be short staffed again. So they refused uh, to bring me on board. That sucks. That kind of brings us back to a video that I did not too long ago and I'll post a card up here in the corner of being too old to work and too young to quit. And in many cases, you're of a certain age which makes it a little bit difficult for not just dealerships, independent shops, lube shops, or even coffee shops, fast food joints, etc. It makes it really hard to hire somebody that's at a certain age level just solely based on your age and what you're applying for. So while you're young, at least learn two or three trades. That would be my recommendation. So that way, when push comes to shove or something bad happens, you have some kind of a fallback plan, a B, a plan B or a plan C or even a plan Z. You know what I'm saying? So. You're not always going to get the job that you want. It's not always going to be a dream job. You're not always going to make the pay that you want. And I hear this all the time from people like, hey, should I take a pay cut to get better hours? Hey, I lost my job and I'm looking for a job, but the only people that want to hire me want to pay me less. What should I do? That really depends on your financial situation. I understand that a lot of people have a lot of bills. Maybe you got a little bit ahead of yourself and you bought stuff that you really couldn't afford. Now what do you do that you can't afford it? Uh, do you sell it? Do you give it back? Do you let it repo? Do you file bankruptcy? I mean, there's so many different options, right? And obviously, a lot of people are like, just get back to work, 
go do what you were doing, make the most that you could possibly make so you can get back on your feet. Yes, you know what? And there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna disagree with me on this. There was a couple of times, and you guys have been a part of it, where I wasn't sure when my next meal ticket was gonna come from, so I started selling a bunch of the tools that I had. I know, tools make you money, you should never sell your tools, blah, 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 blah. Feast or famine, baby, feast or famine. When you need a roof over your head, food in your kids' mouths, and in your mouth, and you're still looking for work, but you don't have any other income, sometimes selling some of the stuff that you have can help bring you back onto your feet. I've had to do it. I'm, I've been there, I've done that. I've slept under bridges, I've been on the streets, I've been homeless for over a year and a half, I've been in the military for almost, what, 17 and a half years now. Guys, I know, I know how hard it is out there. And especially when it comes to losing a loved one, that's another topic that I wanted to bring up before we conclude this video. Nothing can prepare you for a loved one's loss, whether it's emotionally, spiritually, or physically, or even financially, and that's part of the emotional part of it. It's an unexpected expenditure that you have to come up with at the last minute. And maybe you didn't save for that event because you were hoping that it would never happen. But shit happens. I've had, and I won't name names or anything, I'll just say I had a family relative whose daughter died just before her 16th birthday. That was the hardest thing that anyone in my family's ever had to deal with, is the loss of a child. Cancer is a bitch, and, and there's a handful of other things that could have possibly caused it too. And it's, it's really difficult to deal with that. The second one is when your grandmother or your mother or your father pass, and you don't think it's ever gonna happen because you're thinking, well, they're not that old. Chances are they're probably gonna live for another five or 10 years. You never know when someone's gonna go. You never know when their card is gonna be given. And you can't decide how they wanna go. They're the ones that have to decide that. Do they sit in the house all day watching TV and not doing anything, waiting for that day to come? Or do they get out and get a chance to experience one more hoorah uh, before that time comes? And you know what, if it was me, and I'm, I've, I've thought about it, if it was me, I would much rather go to a, an unknown place for a family adventure or gathering or get together and if something happened to me and that was my time to go, at least I know I did it comfortably and I did it on, in my own way and I had the best time that I could possibly have before I went. I would hate to be laid up in some kind of retirement home or hospital bed counting down the minutes waiting for my time to come. That would just, yeah, it, would, it wouldn't be the way that I'd want to go. You know, or if, if something, heaven forbid, happened and I ended up having to become a vegetable, I wouldn't want that extra burden on my family's uh, plate where they had to financially afford to continue to care for me as a vegetable. But the same side, I don't want to die either. I would hope that one day I would wake up and be right back at it with my family. So that's a hard call to make too, you know? And there's just a lot of things, guys. And something bad happened to someone that, I, that I'm really close with at work and it, it drove this conversation and topic. And then something else had happened to another good friend of mine uh, that was at the meet and he's going through it, something a little bit different and I'm like, dude, so much bad shit has happened to so few people that I just, in the all in the beginning of the same exact week, this has been a really shitty fucking week for everybody. And I, I hope you guys are having a kick-ass week and I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer or bring anyone down, but this is stuff that you guys should be thinking about and if you're not thinking about it, you should be thinking about it because anything can happen on any given day and it's hard to plan for a lot of this stuff. So really you should be thinking about your worst day and your best day and then how you can plan uh, ahead to hopefully at least be stable enough to make it a few months you know, down the road before you can figure stuff out again. That's all I got for this video, guys. Again, thanks as always for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like the video, give it a thumbs down. Share with me some of your coping mechanisms. What do you do with your family? How do you cope with stress? And then what kind of things have you been through? Uh, what kind of shit shows have you seen to where it's just been, it feels like it's impossible, but you made it through it? Let's bring up the discussion and let's talk about it because I know that a lot of people go through a lot of shit all the time and everybody has their own shit that they have to deal with on a day-to-day. -day. That's all I got. We'll see you guys next time. Cheers and deuces.